this episode, we're going to look at using continuous integration within GitLab. And GitLab is a version control system similar to GitHub, but it's their own spin on things, and they do offer a self-hosted version. So if you have a couple of servers in your basement or something, then you can spin up your own GitLab environment and have all of your source code stored locally within your own network. Or if you want, you can use their GitLab.com version, which both of these solutions have a free option. Notably though, if you use the GitLab.com hosting, then you are able to get 2,000 continuous integration pipeline minutes per month. So in this episode, we're going to look at using the continuous integration, which they call it the GitLab runner. And we're going to look at two different kinds. We're going to look at using one of the shared runners, which is one of the runners that's running on the actual GitLab environment. And then we're also going to look at having our own installed runner on our computer. So these 2000 minutes won't apply to us, but instead all the tests will run locally on my own machine and the results would be get pushed up to the GitLab.com. And while this episode is not sponsored by GitLab, I must say that I really love their product and I also love the transparency of the company. So on my own home servers, I have an instance of GitLab running in a virtual environment and that's where I put all of my personal projects. So once we sign up for a account and we log in, we're going to go ahead and create a new project. Within the new project, I'm going to create a example. And one of the neat things about GitLab is that they have a lot of different kind of features and integrations. So this is going to create just a blank project. But if I wanted to create a project from a template, or I could import a project from a different resource. But in our case, I'm just going to start off with a blank project. I'll then create the project on my computer, and then we'll push it up to get the code running. And so now you see we have an empty project. We can scroll down to see what we need to do in order to get the code pushed up to here. And it really is simply just having this URL that we're going to be pushing to. So I'm going to copy the git remote add origin and then the location of the repository. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.